while we're looking at um, dark field let's move across to another grating on the slide which as you can see is a very low contrast it's a grating which consists of simply different thicknesses different optical paths of material in the form of stripes and also and I'm sure accidentally but very conveniently from my point of view there are some little black spots on it which give me something to focus on. I could put the dark field stop in but before I do that of course we'll have to um, focus the image with the with the extra piece of glass in. So there we have a focused image. You'll see incidentally at the top that even though the image is virtually invisible we still get a diffraction pattern up at the top. Rather weak one but we get a diffraction pattern. If I put in the dark field stop you'll now see a dark field image of the object there showing up the lines in good contrast. So it's easily possible to get contrast from what appears to be an otherwise almost invisible object. There, in the dark field case, we're building the image simply from the diffracted beams. If we try to build an image from the diffracted beams plus the zero order, there seem to be two problems. One, as you can see from the diffraction pattern, the zero order is very bright and so it's swamping the diffracted beams so they're not able to interfere in a fair way but also even if the zero order beam were not so bright in fact you still wouldn't see significant detail significant contrast in the image this is because in fact for a non-absorbing specimen like this the relationship between the diffracted beams and the zero order beams is not half a wavelength. That difference is in fact more like a quarter of a wavelength. And waves that are a quarter of a wavelength out of phase one with another can never interfere destructively. But there is a, another way of getting contrast in an image of this kind. I'll put in here another kind of stop which needs making concentric. You can probably see that this one is more transparent than the previous one. It's only slightly grey. We return to the image, ensure that it's precisely in focus, which is around there. Before I put it in, I'll just say that the grey area in the centre of this device is not only simply a little bit grey, so that it absorbs some of the light passing through, but it has a slightly different optical path from its surroundings. Its optical path is a quarter of a wavelength different from that of its surroundings. So the situation we have here is that the diffracted beams due to the specimen are one quarter of a wavelength different from the zero order and if I push in this device this is now adding another quarter of a wavelength phase difference between the two beams we're ending up with half a wavelength and half a wavelength gives us the possibility of destructive interference which is what you see in the bottom image so we're getting an image deriving from a diffraction pattern which looks as if it's the diffraction pattern of 
an absorbing object. An absorbing object has half a wavelength phase difference. This little bit I must ask you simply to believe at the moment. An absorbing ob object has half a wavelength phase difference between the diffracted beams and the zero order. A non-absorbing object has a quarter of a wavelength. With my little device here, I've added a quarter of a wavelength and further quarter of a wavelength phase difference to the zero order and we're ending up with half a wavelength. I've converted the diffraction pattern of a non-absorbing object into the diffraction pattern of an absorbing object and so the image that we see is the image of an absorbing object. This is a, an appropriate point to say that the image that you get is built from the diffraction pattern. If you manipulate the diffraction pattern so that it looks as if it's the diffraction pattern from some other object, then you see the image that that diffraction pattern dictates. In this case, you are looking at a highly contrasty image which looks as if it's the image of absorbing black lines, but in fact they are non-absorbing lines. This technique is called phase contrast. Here we're doing it for the purpose of demonstration with a pinhole of illumination, which everybody knows they shouldn't really use. I'm doing this only for, because it's helpful for demonstration. And in the back focal plane of the objective, I'm using a little phase contrast spot, which coincides with the image of that pinhole of illumination. In the real world, phase contrast microscopes are not built that way. They're built with an illuminating annulus, a ring of light, because it's rotationally symmetrical and better fills the aperture of the objective. And you can see there the diffraction pattern is multiple rings instead of simply multiple pinholes or multiple slits. We have here the phase contrast area, the phase ring on what is called a phase plate which I can push into coincidence. We'll now have a look at the image, no contrast, push in the ring on the phase plate and immediately we see high contrast. So here we have a method of producing a visible image from an invisible object. People often worry about whether the image is a true picture of the object and you almost heard me say true in inverted commas there because it's even a little bit difficult to decide what is the truth. But in this case you don't want a true image of the object. If you've got a, an invisible object, presumably a true image is an invisible image. In this case, our image is an artifact, but it's a deliberate artifact, a well understood artifact, and a useful artifact. So um, the concept of the image being true to the specimen is not really one that we ought to consider.